In the macroeconomics lectures so far, we've considered closed economies, so the ISLM model, the ISLM PC model, or the ASAD model, were all a model for one economy that does not trade with other countries. Now, however, we want to open up the economy and allow for trade with others and for capital flows with others. And the first thing that we have to talk about in this context is exchange rates and how they are defined. There are two ways of defining the exchange rate in terms of uh, quotations. The first is the direct quotation or price quotation, and the second one is the indirect quotation or quantity quotation. In case of the first, the direct quotation, we would ask from the perspective of the home country how much we have to pay for one uh, unit of the foreign currency. So if we are in the US and the foreign economy is the Eurozone, then uh, this would give us how many US dollars we have to pay for one Euro. In this case, with an exchange rate at the beginning of uh, 2024, um, we would need to pay one dollar, one US dollar and 10 cents for one Euro. And from the perspective of the Eurozone, the United States is the foreign economy, so um, the direct quotation um, here would be how, ma how many euros we would have to pay for one US dollar, and with the same uh, exchange rate that prevailed at that time, we would need to pay 91 euro cents per US dollar. The indirect quotation is actually the opposite, so it asks how much of the foreign currency we can buy with one unit of the home currency. So, from the perspective of the United States, we would um, get how many euros we can buy with one US dollar. And from the perspective of the Eurozone, we would get the US dollars that we can buy with one euro. And we see here that actually the indirect quotation is exactly um, the reverse of the direct quotation. So when we have here uh, from the US perspective that we can um, uh, that we can buy one euro with uh, one dollar and ten cents, then this is exactly the indirect quotation from the eurozone's perspective, where we say that we get uh, one dollar and ten cents for one euro. And if we talk about the nominal exchange rate between two uh, currency uh, areas, so we do not yet adjust for prices, therefore we have the nominal exchange rate, then the problem with the direct quotation is that if the home currency is appreciating, the direct quotation actually would imply a decrease in the exchange rate. That's what we see here immediately. So if the US dollar would appreciate, then you have to pay less in terms of dollars for one euro. So actually an appreciation in the currency would mean that the nominal exchange rate measured by the direct quotation goes down. Since this is a bit counterintuitive, we will usually use indirect quotation when we talk about the different models later on, uh, but there will be some exceptions when we show graphs that are in the direct quotation. But in the models, we will use the, as the nominal exchange rate the price of one unit of the home currency measured in the foreign currency. So we will use the indirect quotation. Now we immediately start with an exception. So I show here uh, from the Federal Reserve Bank of uh, St. Louis data the exchange rate of the dollar uh, versus the euro, and that's the direct quotation here from uh, the beginning of the uh, existence of the euro as a currency, 1999 uh, to 2023, basically. You would have parity at one, so then one US dollar would be uh, the same as one euro, and the euro started slightly above um, one US dollar when it was introduced, but then it depreciated and uh, the dollar appreciated, which means in the direct quotation that the nominal exchange rate of the dollar decreased. Then from about 2002 onwards, until the global uh, financial and economic crisis, the dollar actually uh, depreciated and the euro appreciated, and in the direct quotation this means an increase in the nominal exchange rate. 
Then there was this global financial crisis and usually such a crisis is associated with a flight into security and the US dollar is seen as a currency that is very secure. So during that time the dollar appreciated quite a lot um, against uh, the euro. Um, so therefore the direct quotation would imply a decrease in the nominal interest uh, exchange rate. And then there was a, a long uh, downward uh, trend again where the uh, dollar actually appreciated uh, against uh, the euro. Now the next figure here shows not only the nominal exchange rate of the dollar versus the euro but also of the dollar versus the UK pound and that's the red line here. And we see that kind of um, there is a strong correlation between these series. So whenever the uh, dollar appreciated against uh, the euro, it also tended to appreciate against uh, the pound. When it depreciated against the euro, it depreciated against the pound. And what we see here during the global financial crisis is actually that the dollar appreciated much more against the pound than against the euro. And this may be explained by the fact that um, the UK is quite a, a financial hub, actually. And then the, what we can actually um, deduce from that is that uh, the UK pound also became closer to the euro in terms of the exchange rate. The reason why we can see this is that the gap between the two exchange rates uh, of the US dollar against the euro and against the UK pound narrowed over time. Up to now, we have looked at bilateral exchange rates. So the previous two uh, figures were the bilateral exchange rate of the US dollar versus the euro and the bilateral exchange rate of the US dollar versus the UK pound. And there we've already seen that um, the two bilateral exchange rates moved quite similarly. So there was a strong uh, correlation. But there are some differences, for example, the weakness of the pound uh, during the global financial crisis and also after the uh, Brexit. Now, however, what we want to do is to construct a multilateral exchange rate. And this uh, would be that we do not need to consider then the bilateral exchange rate of one country versus all the other countries or currency areas in the world, but we would uh, calculate a weighted average of these bilateral exchange rates for more than two countries. And that gives basically the strength of a currency versus the rest of the world, basically. Then, of course, the central question is which weight should we use to compute such a multilateral exchange rate? And the most obvious one would be the trade intensity between two countries. So if two countries trade quite a lot, with each other, then the bilateral exchange rate um, of these two countries would matter more for the multilateral exchange rate of the country in which we are uh, interested. And if two countries do not trade at all, for example, then uh, the bilateral exchange rate should um, be not very important or not important at all for uh, the country that we are considering. And the resulting exchange rate that we get by this weighted average in terms of trade intensities is also often referred to as the effective exchange rate of a country vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world. And here I have again a picture illustrating now the multilateral exchange rate of the US dollar from uh, 2009 onwards um, to uh, 2023. And here we now have this series in the indirect quotation. So now indeed it's intuitive. If uh, this goes down, that means that the dollar uh, depreciates. And if it goes up, the dollar appreciates. And we've seen that the dollar depreciated until about 2011 and since then appreciated. And particularly during um, times when there is a lot of um, uncertainty, uh, as during the COVID uh, crisis, then we see a huge increase uh, here in a very short period of time of the multilateral exchange rate of the US dollar. And we see a similar thing here during the global uh, financial crisis. Now, so far we've talked about nominal exchange rates and there we have seen the two uh, quotations that we have, direct quotation 
versus indirect quotation, and we have seen bilateral exchange rates versus multilateral exchange rates. Now we go one step further and we want to actually talk about the real exchange rate. So we want to get from the nominal exchange rate to the real exchange rate. And this is what we are usually interested in when we uh, say go on vacation to another country. Um, then we want to know how much does our home currency buy in terms of goods in the foreign uh, currency area. Now, how can we do such a computation? Because that's something that is usually very difficult to do. You have different goods in the Eurozone than in the United States, uh, and you would have to know how much these goods cost in terms of the uh, local currency to be able to uh, calculate a, a real exchange rate or a purchasing power that you have with your currency when you go to the foreign economy. The Economist, actually a, a weekly magazine, um, came up with an interesting idea um, uh, quite a while ago, and that is to compare the price of Big Macs across the different um, uh, currency zones, because the Big Mac is a product that is widely available in uh, many countries of the world, and it consists of almost the same ingredients uh, everywhere. And so if we compare the real price of a Big Mac in uh, the United States versus the real price of a Big Mac in the Eurozone, then we would get a quite um, a good picture of the actual purchasing power that we have with one unit of the home currency. For an illustration, assume that a Big Mac costs 5 US dollars in Boston and 3 euros in Vienna. And now from the perspective of the Bostonian, we want to know how... Uh, the purchasing power uh, is and how many Big Macs I can buy in the foreign currency. So the exchange rate uh, from the perspective of the Bostonian would be um, 0.91 as before. So that's the nominal exchange rate in the indirect uh, quotation. So if this person now uh, exchanges uh, dollars for euros and goes to Vienna, then after exchanging currencies, this person would be able to buy uh, the $5 uh, exchanged in euro, which would be less than $5 in terms of euro, divided by three, because that's the price of the Big Mac in Vienna, in terms of Big Macs in Vienna. So for one Big Mac in Boston, this person could buy 1.5 Big Macs in Vienna. So in this case, the Bostonian would uh, hypothetically <clears throat> be able to exchange one Big Mac in Boston for 1.5 Big Macs in Vienna. So the purchasing power of this person in Vienna would be higher than in Boston. And that's now the, in essence, the real exchange rate, which is defined as the nominal exchange rate multiplied by the price difference between the home uh, currency area and the foreign currency area. So epsilon denotes the real exchange rate, P is the price of home goods in terms of home currency, P star is the price of foreign goods in terms of foreign currency, and E times P is the price of foreign goods in home currency. Now, uh, a real appreciation would be an increase in this real um, interest rate, and that means that the price of home goods in terms of foreign goods increases, and the real depreciation would be if the price of home goods in terms of foreign goods decreases. So in this case, a real appreciation would mean that I can buy more of the foreign good um, by uh, sacrificing one good at home, uh, hypothetically. And the depreciation would mean that I um, can buy less of this uh, foreign good. So essentially, the real exchange rate adjusts for purchasing power across currency areas. And we see here the example of the real multilateral exchange rate of the US dollar, starting again uh, in 2006 now. And we see that the 
um, US dollar in real terms uh, depreciated, so purchasing power um, of uh, US citizens vis-a-vis uh, -vis the rest of the world it decreased until about uh, 2012, and since then it increased. So it mirrors a little bit the picture of the nominal exchange rate, but it's more uh, dampened uh, here because the differences in purchasing power are an equalizing force, as we will see later when we talk about purchasing power parity. So this concludes our brief discussion about exchange rates. So we've learned what um, quotations there are, direct quotation versus indirect quotation, what an appreciation of the home currency means in these uh, uh, two different um, quotations, what the difference is between the bilateral and the multilateral exchange rate, and what the difference is between the nominal exchange rate and the real exchange rate. And in the next video, we will talk about the theory of purchasing power parity.